Do you ever have that feeling where you can't tell if something's a memory or if it's something you dreamed? The flashback is a crucial element to telling the tale of Martha in the 2011 film written and directed by Sean Durkin, Martha Marcy May Marlene. After escaping an abusive cult, Martha takes refuge with her older sister and begins to blur her time with the cult and her new reality together, experiencing delusions which lead to extreme paranoia that the cult is still pursuing her. To allow the audience to understand Martha's plight, Sean Durkin provides us with two stories interwoven, the story of Martha's two years with the cult and the story of Martha after escaping said cult. And these two stories merge together not only to create our narrative, but to showcase Martha's growing anxiety from the extremely abusive life she once led. Martha displays behavior on a scale from interesting to disturbing. We see her refuse the green smoothie her sister offers her, see her jump into the lake without a bathing suit, see her knack for gardening, and see her try to sleep in the same bed as her sister Lucy and brother-in-law Ted while they are having sex. All of these moments can be connected to the various flashbacks we see throughout the film. The green smoothie reminds Martha of the cleansing drink given to her before she passes out and is then raped by cult leader Patrick, an initiation into her new quote-unquote family. Another flashback shows several members of the cult and Martha swimming together naked. In one flashback, we see Martha gardening with other members of the cult. And finally, there are several flashbacks that explain that everyone in the cult sleeps together, including a scene explicitly showing multiple couples having sex in the same vicinity. But the film takes it even farther than simply giving us scenes in the present day to connect to flashbacks from the past. Oftentimes, flashbacks do not connect right away to scenes of the present. The film blurs our sense of what is happening now and what has already happened through seamless transitions. Just as Martha can't always tell these moments of past and present apart, neither can we. Can I go swimming? <laughs> hey, you don't need to ask. But it is not only how the film structures itself and transitions from scene to scene that creates a sense of anxiety. The film's title adds another layer of confusion. Though we come to know our main character's name is Martha, we see in the flashbacks that she is given other names as well. She goes by Marlene when answering phone calls while living with the cult. It is also implied that when one joins the cult, they receive a new name. Martha. You look like a Marcy May. Marcy was my grandmother's thing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Marcy! Marcy May! The cult is constantly talking about the idea of cleansing oneself from the past. Not only are the women cleansed in the act of rape, but cult members are forced to let go of their old identities in order to embrace new ones with a brand new name. This is emphasized again when a new woman joins the cult named Sarah, who Patrick calls Sally. Hi, have you met Sarah? Sally, yeah. Martha can't distinguish her past self with the person she truly is. So enveloped was she in Marcy May and the world of the cult that she finds it difficult to assimilate back to being Martha again, following the social standards expected of her in the real world. I wish you felt more comfortable talking to me. I do. So talk. There's nothing to talk about. I had a boyfriend, he lied to me. I left, that's it. Not everything has to be a big deal. Her unwillingness and inability to speak emphasizes her paranoia even further. She herself can't quite internalize what has happened to her and what is currently happening to her. How then can she explain it to those around her? What happened to you? What happened? I don't know! Martha consistently falls deeper and deeper into her paranoid state, afraid that the cult has tracked her down and will never leave her in peace. The film does not answer the question of whether Martha is correct or not, although it is implied that this is all in her head. While she has physically left the cult, it is still with her mentally. What the flashbacks in this film are able to accomplish is how the human brain processes the past. 
the film captures a piece of humanity. Our lives are constantly influenced by small moments, just as Martha's present is influenced by small moments of her life with the cult. Just as certain smells take us back to our childhoods, certain elements trigger Martha's memories that she wishes she could leave behind, but can't. In a film of this nature, the flashback is necessary and is handled with such style and intentionality that really allows the audience to feel Martha's struggle and overall confusion. Just a picture. That's all. Will you stand there, stand there with the nightshade? 